Hi everyone, Jeff Cote with another question from a fellow boater for BoatingTechTalk.com. All right, so we've got a question here from Gary. Uh, Gary says, Jeff, I'm in the process of completely restoring my dad's 1988 Chris Craft 42. Love Chris Craft. I purchased a new a Garmin chart plotter along with a Fusion Apollo multi-zone stereo. Okay, the boat currently has NMEA 0183, but I would like to set up NMEA 2000 for my new gear. Where do I start? I love it. I love it. First of all, what is NMEA? Um, NMEA stands for National Marine Electronics Association. Um, and it's a protocol for sharing information. Uh, 0183 is a serial, so it's, it's basically an older type of protocol. And we have, if you're geeking out and you're like, Jeff, 0183, what is that? Do I have it on my boat? Again, search our YouTube, search our website. Uh, you'll find tons of articles just on this subject. Some are really long published articles that we've printed for magazines. Uh, so you can definitely educate yourself on 0183. Uh, but to stay on topic, because I do go off topic sometimes, let's talk about NME 2000. NME 2000 um, is basically a little bit more plug and play, but it's not, but it's more like it. Um, it uses basically CAN bus technology. So it's basically five wires, uh, two for power, two for uh, data, and one for shield. And it's sort of a five pin circuit and you literally plug, you don't have to use tools or anything. It's actually CAN bus. And NMEA 2000 is basically meaning that it allows diff multiple devices. And this could be your chart plotter, a heading sensor, a fusion stereo like Gary has on his boat. It could be, I don't know, uh, could be a fire detector, a uh, smoke detector. It could be uh, anything. I mean, they, everything is now, a lot of new engines have all their, like if you've got a new outboard, it could output J1939, which can be converted to NME 2000. So there's a lot of reasons to do NME 2000. And it's been out for a while now. You know, adoption, relatively good adoption has been probably anywhere between 15 years is when it started really getting momentum about 10 years ago, again, more mon momentum. And now it's pretty much all new boats have it and a lot of older boats are getting it. So the first thing is I would think about where are all the different things that I could potentially do on my boat for NME 2000. Don't limit yourself. My suggestion is don't limit yourself by simply thinking about the chart plotter and the fusion. If you're gonna run a backbone, a backbone is the, the segment where all the different devices can interconnect. So for instance, <clears throat> you might wanna think about your backbone. Your backbone might be only this long. On some boats, we've worked on boats that are 30 meters, 40 meters in length, 50 meters in length. The backbone might be way longer. You know, some backbones are 200 feet long. Now, of course, we have to separate. There's maximum distances and there's all these different issues, but on a 42 foot boat, you know, the stereo and the Garmin, are they side by side? And what's the distance between the two? So what I would do is literally take a piece of paper and we have videos just on this topic, by the way, uh, just on the topic of NME 2000. But I would basically draw out a sketch. Okay, where are all the potential devices that I can think about today? Not that you're gonna do today, but that you could think about. And then what you wanna do is like dream big, because it starts with a vision. Dream big. Realistic, but dream big. And then ask yourself, okay, if I'm going to run a backbone, where should my backbone be, right? So often uh, on a powerboat, we're going to run the, the NMEA 2000 backbone from the engine room all the way to potentially the electrical panel. And then we're going to run it to the lower helm. And then we're going to run it to the upper helm. And then we're going to run it up into the arch or into the radar post or something like that. Because there might be other sensors like a weather station that we might include. So it's going to be snaking, but it's going to be continuous. The other thing too that you want to look at um, is you're going to want to make sure that you can buy what are called starter kits. And we have one on our website. Garmin makes a Garmin starter kit. It includes a power drop, a bunch of T's, a few cables, and the termination resistors. And what you want to do when you build anything on your boat, and I'm telling you, Bravado here does not work. Tried it, failed, learned the hard way. Uh, and this is what I'm sharing is draw out your network because we've commonly come on boats where they have multiple resistors. Resistors are used as end caps. People don't know what it's for. 
So Gary, you're on the right step here because you're actually asking questions before you're doing. So probably a Garmin starter kit is probably the way to go. Um, think about where your backbone is gonna be. Now, if the two devices are close, you might not care. I've seen backbones that are literally only this long because all the devices are interconnected on this tiny little segment. Um, and then after that, there are, as the networks get bigger, then the question is, where are you gonna insert power? Ideally, it should be in the middle, but in the middle of what? The distance of the cabling or the distance of the loads? And that also becomes a factor. If you've got 10 devices that are at one end of the backbone and you got only one there, then where should the power be? Closer to where all the loads. Maritron, a great company, they actually have software to do this. Uh, they've got an N2K builder. Um, it's a little geeky, but it's awesome. It, they did that years ago and it was awesome then. It's still awesome today. And if you're gonna build an NMEA 2000 uh, network on your boat, think about using the Maritron NMEA 2000 builder. Great tool, we use it in-house. Um, it's awesome. And then after that, uh, make sure that you don't in connect too many T's together. Sometimes what happens is you have more and more T's, they start warping, right? Uh, and they, believe it or not, they start undoing themselves because they're actually locked into place with threads, right? So you're actually locking them into place into one another. So those are sort of gotchas. But right now, again, you're only at two devices. And the reason why, by the way, for the rest of you wondering, why would you connect a Fusion Apollo stereo deck with a chart plotter? Well, the reality is a Garmin chart plotter can actually control that deck remotely. So you could be at your helm, and literally have the chart plotter, and you can literally have a bar at the bottom, and Remarine does the same thing, so this applies to both, but you can literally have at the bottom, and you can actually be controlling your deck like if you were at the deck, but you're doing it from your chart plotter. And so you can have the deck be maybe at the aft of the boat, and you could have, literally be on the flybridge, and you could be operating your fusion deck remotely, not sending content to it, which is different, you're actually deciding what zones are gonna play what, what your treble is gonna be like, your bass. You're literally operating your deck. You can change the songs, you can pause it, you can do all of that just from your touchscreen. So it's pretty cool. And so there's a good reason why you would wanna integrate a Fusion Apollo with a chart plotter, in this instance, a Garmin chart plotter. But like I said, uh, Raymond does it, Simrad does it, B&G does it. Like all the manufacturers have done integration for sound systems for a while now. And specifically that sound system is Fusion. Fusion's awesome, is, is really good too. So Gary, great question. And research on the website, we've got lots of information on me in 2000. And good luck with your project. Thanks for asking. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna get more of this cool content. And also check out our website. If you've got questions that are unanswered, we've actually taken the time to answer quite a few questions and you might be surprised to find the answer right there on our website. So thanks again.